thought this would make kind of an interesting segment here that um, we could talk about is sideshow banner art. I don't know. It's kind of a I think a thing of the past now. Some of the um, the um, banners you're looking at there from the old carnivals and sideshows. Uh, if you grew up in the 60s and early 70s, they were a big thing at carnivals that would come to to town. So there was uh, all these attractions. You would pay like 50 cents, 25 cents, 50 cents, maybe a dollar to go in and and check out these uh, sideshow attractions. And uh, if you ever want to check into it, it really turned into a form of art. There's a couple of really nice books out there. One's called Sideshow Banner Art, and there's another one. Um, that I've gotten about a $50 book called Fairground Art that actually shows a lot of the making of the uh, carnival horses and um, painting of the fun houses, the haunted houses, and, and then down to these sideshow banners that I wanted to talk about, which is really interesting because they actually became, the banners themselves became a piece of art history. So what's your, uh, some of those ones you've, you've seen are actual sideshow banners that... Uh, that used to exist and what we're um, looking at right here is um, some of the uh, th this is a building on my farm and there used to be a, a skull painted on the wall so I'd, I'd been really gotten into the sideshow banner art and wanted to do this uh, side of the building like an old sideshow banner so I couldn't think of what to put on there but what else but the uh, from the two talking mushroom puppets thought we'd go with the uh, uh, two talking mushroom. So we started with a, a guy named Bill Carigny who was uh, working at Lowe's. You know, he had to get this big bulk of paint. You wouldn't want to, of course, paint a building that size with, with something out of an art store. So we had some custom mixed, that's a roasted pumpkin in the background that we rolled the background of the building. And then I'm just going in there with more outdoor exterior latex paint kind of roughing in the uh, the mushrooms and uh, it was really neat that these sideshow banners had all types of, of certain things they would put on them what, whatever you were the main attraction was would of course be called the attraction and there were there were about four main artists of that time Johnny Mia Snap Wyatt uh, Jack Cripe Jack Cripe went, went by Jack Tattoo Cripe and some people called him Jack Sailor Cripe and Fred Johnson, they were probably um, four of the more famous artists who did a lot of these sideshow banners um, for the carnivals. And um, they used a lot, used oil paints, uh, casein paints, which were milk-based. Um, so you had all kinds of things like Ape Girl, Alligator Girl, the Rubber Skin Man, Lobster Boy, Penguin Man two-headed raccoons and a lot of them were just like the, the the animals were mostly just props that were made <laughs> out of foam or uh, um, taxidermy parts that were put together to, to look like you know they had two heads and stuff like that so usually um, one quote was the gullible public was usually bitterly disappointed when they got inside the tent and I remember being a child probably seven eight years old my dad taking me and, and one of them was woman turns into gorilla you know right right before you and you'd go in you pay your 50 cents and it was this woman would come out on stage and then behind you was a, a projector so they would just project an image of a gorilla <laughs> onto this woman so what you got there you can see the the mushrooms which would be called the attraction so they're getting about done the two big yellow circles those are going to be what's called the bullets and then the kind of green thing across the top was usually called the flag. So that's where you would put in the name of the attraction. So overall, maybe a month and a half just working on this thing, sometimes in the evening to get it, um, get it up and done.
I was uh, real interested in painting the, uh, the mushrooms myself, but I wasn't extremely confident in myself on the lettering. So Janet, being a pretty good letterer, uh, she took on the task of actually putting the letters up on the, uh, the flag. You know, but I wanted to do the bullets, the, uh, the alive and why. So uh, I'd always been attracted to those, the things they always put there, strange but true, frightening, factual, facsimile. You can even see over there on the why bullet, the uh, question mark is up under the word why, which is the way they did it. And up on the alive, alive bullet, they... Uh, always use kind of a uh, oriental scroll work there so I'll put on there and uh, these banners are you know actually a lot of them are still owned and uh, on display up at the Carl Hammer Gallery in Chicago I think they go from like between five and seven seven five to seven thousand dollars per banner for some of the uh, old original ones that are, that are probably about the size of that building there maybe like uh, ten by and about 15 feet, something like that. There you go, sideshow banner art. Piece of carnival history. What you saw earlier was an agreement between the county and myself uh, to drop a trap off. I've seen this dog, saw him about two months ago with another dog. And of course dogs coming in on your property, I keep my place fenced in. But I've got chickens who have been killed by dogs before. And of course I got the goats, which is uh, the dog being an enemy of goats. So I had seen this guy running through the field a few days ago and called animal control and so uh, they loaned me this trap where I put, there's a plate right there and I put a can of dog food and some raw, ha uh, actually a can of cat food was all I had with me and some, uh, some raw hamburger. So he's a stray or somebody's dropped him off or he's just... So, uh, what I had to do was get the trap, set it, and wait. It's been about setting out here about two days. But anyhow, you want to get the dog so that they can pick it up. It has no collar. Um, just a drifter, I guess. You know. But anyhow, they'll come pick it up in the morning. But my main concern was the goats. It was I did see it go up and kind of stare in a chicken pen. So 
feel kind of bad for it, but at least now it can, maybe they can find an owner if there is one. Or, uh, where it doesn't have to drift around, just eat wherever. Now normally if you're someone with livestock, you uh, are not real fond of dogs coming on your property around goats, chickens, things that they'll kill. But you can tell, uh, and we've verified that he is actually a she. So you feel bad for him, you know. I don't think the dog would hurt anything. It seems gentle. It's terrible. 